You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. We're going to start the show now. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the Boss Hogger Liberty Podcast on the We Are Libertarians Network. I'm your host, Jeremiah Morland. As always, I'm joined by our co-host, Dakota Davis. Hey, how's it going, Jer? Oh, man. Episode Third three episode. in a row. Yep. Three in a week, man. Having fun. Oh, yeah. It feels like summertime in here now. It's about 95 degrees. I switched to short sleeves. It's, it's difficult to keep a house built in 1914 <laughs> cool in the upstairs. You've got five men in a small bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, our show is about our lives in rural Indiana. It's a show about folks who are involved in politics. We promise that our episodes are going to be a fun and an easy listen. We interview people who are influencers, elected officials, political experts, and folks that we just find interesting. In the room today, we have Chase Payton on the sports desk. How are we doing, buddy? What up, dude? I'm doing great. Seeing you two days in a row. I am back. Is this the first time you've ever done two episodes in a row? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, first back-to-back days, though. I, yeah. I don't have a yeah. life, so I'm, I'm always available. <laughs> Chase required about mm, seven minutes notice to do this one, so it was perfect. Yep. He's the, the he's, ultimate He's super really sub. good at that. Oh, yeah. And in the other chair, returning guest. I don't know if we call you a co-host in at this point. corner. Or if... No, you're in the red corner, man. Ah, yeah. Red okay. states. Uh, so this is, uh, this is, you were here in like episode 22, 23? 24. Yeah, episode 24. Here. On September, uh, September 21st. Yeah. Jonathan 21st. Lamb. The uh, the candidate for Congress from Yorktown, Indiana, Ball State University. Yes, sir. Uh, Self made guy. You saw him at the Super Bowl on the uh, at halftime or third quarter. You guys had the That's big right. uh, the big show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So excited to have you back. Yeah, yeah. Love it or hate it. We had a Super Bowl ad. That's it. That's Check right. that one off Every, the bucket list. So people did give you hell about it oh, because yeah, of, of your choice, but people talked about it. Oh yeah, that's, and that was that was the important Super Bowl thing. Ad. That's the point of a Super Bowl ad. That's yep. what that's what won me over. I was on the fence until took. I saw the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I was like, I'm voting for this guy. Well, good, good. Yeah, we, I was sitting in the uh, the local Elks Lodge. I'm a member there, and that's where we were watching the Super Bowl. And your commercial came on, and I was like, hey, he was in my spare bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, we've tried to invite everybody yeah. so far. We've tried to have everybody on the show that's running for the seat. It uh, doesn't matter where you're at on the ballot. We've tried to have them all on. We've had success with a lot of them. With uh, most of them, yeah. That uh, there was there was we're still waiting on uh, return uh, for return phone call yeah. from uh, from the guy from Columbus. So, yep, we'll see. There's still time. We'll find we'll find a way to get him on if he if he decides he wants to do some media. I believe I'm the only Republican candidate that's been on though. Yeah, there was we did have another yeah. one scheduled. And, uh, it was a no show. Yeah, he was. Yep. Uh, well, it's a long drive over here because he doesn't live in our district, so he's got to drive from the fifth district to get over here, and you know, <laughs> probably doesn't know how to get here. <clears throat> yeah, residency is a state of mind in Indiana, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's true. So you you did make an announcement yesterday uh, that if you're elected, you're going to stay. You're going to yeah. you're going to be frequenting we, the Indianapolis airport. We created our pledge that I will absolutely be staying here, raising my family here, where uh, I was raised. Yep. Awesome. Four kids got the same teachers that I had in elementary and everything else. My kid said the other day, he says, I think these are the same lunch trays <laughs> that, that you used. I said, no, you're wrong. Those are the same lunch trays that your grandpa used yeah. and then I used. Same same <laughs> lunch trays and the same frozen pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that pizza's good, though. Uh, that yeah, rectangle stuff, yeah. We found, I think that my, my parents found some at like a Costco or something one time. Oh, and like man. my whole family was like, Yes. Nostalgic. <laughs> see, these are the things you miss by being homeschooled. Well, see, yeah. I got both best of both worlds because I first through sixth grade, I went through like four elementary schools. I went to Cowan in Delaware County. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, was, I was a Black, Black Hawk, Hawk for like How a half a year. That? Yeah. Did you go to kindergarten? My wife's aunt taught kindergarten at Cowan. It was fifth grade. I was at Cowan for like part of fifth grade. And then uh, I was a GM guy. Like my dad was a GM transfer. Okay. So we, he was at New Venture Gear on okay. the south side of town. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they, they rented there for like half of my fifth grade year. And then they bought a place in uh, Newcastle, so I went to Blue River for oh, a couple of years, that. and then homeschooled after that. There you go. So I was yeah. a I was a Black Hawk and a Viking. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what were you, Chase? You, your uh, your your mini school? Did you, did you guys was, have a mascot, or you just wore whatever you felt we like that the, day? We were at the Crusaders for a while, and then hmm. we moved to the Patriots. 
Oh, oh my God! Sorry about your luck. Chase said. Uh, oh, Chase man. went to Freedom Baptist <clears throat> Academy. Oh, there you go. He I was not saying graduated with Freedom Baptist. Yeah, it was, was it really at? tiny. It was he graduated top in his class. On That's why so short. Like, it was a class of three. <laughs> but I was first in my class, though. I want to point <laughs> that out. Three? Valedictorian oh, hey. somewhere between uh, uh, Hagerstown and Newcastle, yeah. out, out there on the eastern part of Henry County. Okay. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so you're back. The last time you were here, Dakota says, it was September 21st, 2017. A lot of things yep. have happened since then. It has. Uh, you were the second highest download. The second yeah. highest by nine. It was well, the, so need, close. It was the to, top of mowing season. We need to break that today. Yeah. We need to break that today because now yeah. we have planting season. This that's guy's right. going to be out working the fields. That's right. It's going to be a break next week. Well, and that's – so that the reason Chase is here is because it's planting season. And uh, co-host Cade, he's, uh, he's out planting green beans and sweet corn. Oh, well, for L&K go. Farms tonight. All so. right. Well, very good. Well, we'll give them a shout out. That's it. Absolutely. Stop up there and see him. And he said, uh, he, he, he gave us special instructions to say, be patient. If you're behind yeah. planters, don't yeah. run them over. They'll get it. They'll try to get out of your way. No. But uh, come on, man. It, and be, be chill. It's like a double law now to where you can't pass farm equipment in a no passing zone. You can't pass anybody in a no passing zone. But it's now <laughs> especially illegal to pass farm equipment. It's like hate crime legislation. Yeah. It's still Different it's even more illegal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Double. So uh the last But we time... do need some ag representation here in the district. We haven't had that in our congressional seat for many, many, many a years. Yeah. So. Looking back, yeah, it's uh it's been a while. We haven't had a family been farm been or a while. long time. <laughs> haven't had uh anybody with real ties to the ag community or nope. You know, so we, we haven't had any bovines or yep, so we need that equines or lambs. There you <laughs> see. You, you we saw my Super Bowl one. commercial. What yep. people don't it's realize the name and, and we hey, see the saving money. We see the signs down in uh, Louisville and places. The the ones the lambs on. Yeah, them? yeah. lamb. That's right. Those, yeah, I saw one in Winchester the other day. There you guys, you, you guys visited Astral. Is it Astral up in yeah, Lynn? We did. And uh, I saw you guys have got some of those, uh, the new signs with yep, the lamb yep, uh, yep. on the, uh, it, it's sitting out there. At, uh, That's lambs with three A's. It's yep. 30, uh, 36 and whatever the north south road is. There's a one maybe? Yep. I don't know. It's Yeah, I saw yeah. one in uh, the McCordsville area. I was like, hey, that guy was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and the Super Bowl. And, and the, Super the Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. yeah. My, actually, my dad, I was talking to him today, and he uh uh, he's like, who's coming on the show tonight? And I was like, Jonathan Lamb. He goes, he must be the front runner because I see his signs everywhere. Oh, that's what so, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's that it, you, you're working. If it. only it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> if, if only it took winning the sign Olympics. That's all yes. you had to do. Yep. How many signs? Do you, do you know? Have you have any idea how many signs we've gotten we, out yet? We know. Yeah, you're not telling though. It's a secret. It's like the commissioners won't come on here and tell us what their wind farm number is, and I can't tell, get him to tell me he's put out 50,000 signs. Yep. Uh, it's a house it's, secret. It's south of 50,000, but <laughs> yeah. it's uh, not too far from Yeah, the, the listeners are chiming in and say that they see signs everywhere. Brantley says that he there's a sign across the street from his house in oh, Delaware good. County. Yeah. So the, you're everywhere, man. People, people know that people name. People are excited. They, you know, we got volunteers all over the district that are eager. You know, they'll come to the office and they'll take a bundle of fifty or a hundred signs at one time and just, you know, they'll they'll go out and stick them. I mean, they're people are passionate about this race. These these seats don't open up very often. When they do, right. we need to make sure that we get the right guy in the seat. And so it's been great to have so much support of so many people and volunteers that that want to make sure that we have a voice in our district. And you know. I made the pledge to live in the district, and we we haven't had that either since you know McIntosh was first elected here in our district back in ninety uh, four. Yep. he's been the last person to live in the district. He lived up on uh, University Avenue, right That's down right. from the, right That's down right. from school between uh, Wheeling and uh, in Ball State. Yeah. That's where David lived. So cool when, old White House there. Yeah. So when Mike Pence had the seat, you know, starting in two thousand, you know, he moved the family to D.C. and then obviously Luke has done the same thing. So uh, it'd be good to have some representation here in the district. Our friend Lisa Crosby sees, uh, you know, he, she sees lit Representative Rakita all the time. He actually does live in the district uh, yeah. in the fourth, and he's flying. He's flying back and forth all the time. And Lisa is a, uh, she lives here in Newcastle, but she's one of the fl- the stewardesses, the flight oh, attendants okay, on that okay. DC route. So she sees him all the time. Well, so hopefully I'll see her. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to meeting you. There you go. <laughs> I, I saw on Facebook she's they they left her in Montreal today. It's like a free vacation. Hey. You take that job, and she's up there. Uh, how about trying to read everything in French? It has to be a little rough. Sorry. Though. Like, I'm very sorry. <laughs> From the outside looking into that flight attendant job, it sounds awesome. But I couldn't imagine all the, like, just the waiting games of sitting there. Yeah. Ugh. I feel like a caged animal in there. Yeah, not on for the tarmac. Me. And I always feel gross after I get off a plane. 
Yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine doing that every day. Ah, a little side story. We're getting sidetracked. <laughs> Sorry. Let's yeah, get yeah. back on. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jonathan, you uh, you referred us. It was like a congressional referral. Uh, I, maybe you were trying to clear the ballot off or trying to deal with some things. Tom Firkinoff was uh, yeah. running as a Republican uh, yeah. in the 6th out of Wayne County. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess the Republican the, – the, the party machine, there's no, there's no secret about this. The party machine very much wants Mr. Pence to be their guy. Uh, yeah. So they went through – there were a number of people uh, that had signed their name. And for mm-hmm. whatever reason, the ballot got thinner. People came off. Yeah, so we yep. expected when we first started talking about this when Luke Messer was, you know, rumored to run for Senate and um I actually got approached by a libertarian of all people. Um you know, when we started talking about running, there was a lot of names thrown in the mix that were going to run, you know, a good healthy 12, 14 people that had serious candidates and I think when Luke ran, there was about a dozen that time wasn't there the first time when that seat was open in, in 12. And so we expected to be a crowded field but uh just Got steamrolled out by uh, the vice president's brother, and so you know they tried to steamroll me out as well. But here I am. You're here, and Plus, you're contending. The financial reports show it, man. Yeah, yeah. You're, uh, you're up there. Yeah. So cash that. on, cash on hand. You're sitting on uh, over four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the bank, at least as of the last reporting period. And uh, Greg Pence has got about two twenty eight. So. He's, he's had some uh, pretty big fundraisers since then, so we'll see what uh, magic he's got up his sleeve here at the end. I imagine he's got a big push in store for us, but you know that's all right. At the end of the day, it's not about money. It's about votes. You've right? got to have enough money to get your message out there, which you've yeah. been able to do. You know, with the TV commercials and the you know, Super and Bowl. The, the Super Bowl right. and, and the multiple appearances on the Boss Hog Liberty podcast That's and video right. cast right. now <laughs> in glorious high no, definition. We didn't have video last time. No, it was no. Uh, it was very early. It was yeah. we, we had just moved into the studio. We were doing this in the round. We didn't have the uh, the we were, long. We were sitting at a round table, at, at like a poker table almost, is what it felt like. And let's well, most... It was nice because you can you know see. Well, that's each how other. a lot of the radio when I go on radio, a lot of them are like that. So. Yeah, sitting at a round table, mm-hmm. yeah. and then we were like, you know what? Let's take this up a notch. So we, so we got a an iPhone from Jeremiah's fiance donated nice. an iPhone, and then we started live streaming. And we had to put it in the corner in order to get. It looked a like shot. we had security yeah. video. It did because you had a bean bag last time. Where yeah. Josh, my campaign manager, he he hung out in the bean bag. Yeah, the so bean bag. You got David chair tonight, which is nice. We appreciate that. <laughs> David's looking very patriotic in the corner. Not that there we haven't is. been sitting for. Yeah. Pretty much twelve to fourteen hours a day, every day for, <laughs> since August. So Maybe we are a, a uh, beanbag would have been okay. Yeah, we're we will roll over thirty thousand miles in the campaign here shortly. Wow. You guys, uh, you guys didn't we'll choose the most fuel the e- fuel efficient vehicle either for this thing, but you can no, carry around yeah, signs. Yeah, I got and... a three quarter ton four wheel drive HD twenty five hundred Chevy truck. You're getting about nice. eleven miles per gallon across the district. Thirty thousand miles at a time. Yeah, no wonder you had to raise so door, damn much money. Extended cab, but you know, four by eight signs. These guys with these uh, little tiny short beds. I mean, come on, they can only haul a four by four. They're a danger That's to right. society. Maybe a lamb for Congress, four by eight in your yard. So if someone wants a four by eight and they're the six, why don't you go ahead and hit up Boss Hog for Liberty right here? Just put mm-hmm. it on Facebook and uh, let us know your address. We'll drop a four by eight on you tonight. They'll get one to you. There you go. You deliver yeah. in Henry County tonight. Henry County Constantly tonight. Keep your, keep we have your, 19 uh, counties. I mean, Dave and I go anywhere, anytime. Anytime. Same. Anytime. Call upon. It's the line of duty. That's right. <laughs> Here so, to serve. And that's what it is. That's what that's the whole point of what we're talking about tonight. We are we are in an election for a representative, and we're looking for a representative. And this is a job interview for who is going to represent our district. And, you know, we'll probably get into it later in the notes and start talking about some of these things. But we need a voice of someone that's going to represent our district and not represent Washington, not represent special interest. And that's what I'm doing, because I think, you know, we're all kind of, uh, you know, I'm probably the old man in the room, I guess. People always hit me. They never ask. They always want to know what the age I am. But I'm 36. And, you know. I'm 34. It's, yeah, I'm. I'm, it's, I'm still it's barely our, younger. I'm not old enough to run for Congress yet. But it's it's our generation. It's it's becoming the lost generation, right? It's it's this generation that we're going to lose if you know we don't get problems under control. You know, if we don't get drug addiction under control, and that's why we need representation. We need someone in Washington that's going to understand and fight for us. Yep. All right. So the. Uh, it, we we wanted to point out that you did uh, you did say hey Tom Furkanoff you may want to check yeah, out the yeah. libertarians so we, yeah so we got back to the Tom story so uh, after Tom kind of got uh, pushed out and you know by the letter of the law you know he technically 
he needed uh, someone to sign off on it, and no one was willing to sign off on him running. And we had a phone conversation, and you know, I said, "Tom, you you got to call the Boss Hogs." And I said, "You know, the Libertarian Party is always looking for for folks." And I think that this is how representation should be. I mean, we need good people to represent us in Congress, and we need people with ideas. And you know, my opponent in this this race is is unwilling to talk about ideas and solution. You know, he just wants to talk about the Republican platform and his brother, and he doesn't actually want to talk about solving problems. So I got to know Tom. He's a real smart guy. And he's a guy I could debate. You know, he's a guy that we can talk about solving things together. And um, at the end of the day, you know, once you're elected, you don't have a D or an R behind your name, or in in your case, you don't have uh, – what, what do you guys actually use for the uh, abbreviation behind your name? L or LIB. Yeah. LIB. So you don't yeah. have an LIB up behind your name because you're representing the entire people of the 6th Congressional District. And so you have to be able to bridge those gaps, and, and that's what we need. And, and so I was, I'm glad that Tom's coming over to you guys, and hopefully yeah. you caucus him in, huh? Yeah, he, was, he is now the, uh, the Libertarian Party of Wayne County Chairman. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's he's so. uh, he's establishment already. He's the chairman over there. He's he took over for Red Bell, <laughs> and uh, we'll see. He's uh, it, the, the we we nominate. We don't have a primary in the Libertarian Party, uh, so Tom will caucus. Right, we have a convention. A convention. Okay. Uh, so yeah. the same way the mm-hmm. Republicans or Democrats will right, right. appoint their uh, attorney general nominee at a convention, yep. we do the same thing with all of our statewide and federal candidates. Yep. Uh, so on May fifth in uh, at the Marriott downtown Indy, right at the finish line of the mini marathon, same day. Uh, the libertarians, the libertarians will uh, have their convention, and that's where we'll come out with our uh, our Senate candidates, our Secretary of State candidate, um, our federal candidates, and our state representative candidates. Yep. Uh, so I think Tom's got a real good shot at winning that race. Uh, so let's let's talk about the campaign a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. You've been running all over the state, or all, all over state. East Central and Southeastern Indiana. That's right. What uh, What are the big stories? What are the fun places you've been? Things you've seen? Yeah. The the oddities. I want to hear some good before stuff. before we get into the real policy. I want to oh, know the, we uh, talking, the, the goofiness. We were talking down uh, downstairs outside of the studio. In the, that would be the green room, right? Yeah, that's where we're at. In the, the green, green room, room is talking. the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, today we are in White Rock, which is in Southern Shelby, which is a beautiful campground slash cliff diving facility. And so uh, we're pretty sure that we're going to get the White Rock vote. <laughs> You're gonna rock the white rock. You're gonna walk the rock, rock the white rock. That's right. Yeah. But you know, we we have been everywhere and seen everywhere. Um, we have been to every small town, tons of factories, you know, tons of farms, and just met with people. And like I said earlier, you know, we're we're pushing in on thirty thousand miles we put on the old truck since this campaign has started. And it's what you have to do. You have to get out and and meet people and go across the district. Uh, Dave and I were just laughing. We've been to Madison, Indiana, which – so I'm in Delaware County. For those people that uh, are on the radio, you got to close your eyes and visualize this. Um, Hopefully you're not listening to this podcast in your car, so don't close your eyes. But the the (laughs) district, the 6th Congressional District, we're a large district, so we have 19 counties, technically 18 and a half. But where I'm at in Delaware County, we're in the extreme northwest corner, and so for me to get to the bottom of the district, you know, it's a good three and a half, almost four hours, depending on where you go. And you know, we've made that trip weekly. We've we've been uh, to Madison, Indiana, which is on the river seven times in the last thirty days. So wow. I mean, you know, we hit it. We go down there. We got some good supporters go down there. Nothing like I dropped off, dropped off. I guess about a hundred signs down there, and then someone else called and. Was out of signs and wanted more signs, so we, <laughs> so we uh, hopped into the truck and and drove down there. And you know, luckily we had some appointments uh, along the way, meeting with folks. And so it's it's good. You know, we had a busy today. Today we did about three hundred fifty three sixty on the mileage count today. Well, and you guys have been you've been meeting with uh, local officials. You've That's been. Right. I know you came to the Henry County Economic Development Corporation. Mm-hmm. You've toured a bunch of factories and yep. met with small business owners. Um, and then I, you picked up some endorsements along the way. I saw you, uh, city yeah. councilman down in Rush in Rushville, uh, lots, Craig Smith. Yeah, yeah, we got lots of endorsements. Um, we've met with Cecil almost Bohannon. every mayor. Yeah, Cecil Bohannon. We have, actually we had. We should look. Um, we have a list of economists, PhD economists that have endorsed us, and that list is very, very long. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Economist, yep, I'm an economist, really and I saw on my agenda that we talk about my book about economics at some point. Oh, time. yeah. But I'm a national bestseller now, bestselling I'm author. Hoping, I'm hoping we get a, a copy dropped Did on we? us. I heard they've been... I don't think it was in print yet. It was so long ago you were here, I don't think they were in print last time. No, so I weren't. haven't seen a copy yet. Truck. Yeah. Can we ah, bring those in? There we go. It has to be signed, too. Yeah. Oh, I signed... I autographed one today. I was in... Um, this morning, I was in 
ple- uh, Pleasant View, which is a little small. I wouldn't call it a town. Um, a hamlet. It, it is a hamlet, <laughs> and um, it's right off I seventy four in Shelby County. And I met with some guys. There's a, a group of guys that hang out at a little Country Mart gas station there. I met with them this morning, and randomly, one of the guys uh, was there. Said, "I got your book in the mail," and he uh, he went home, got it, and had me autograph it. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. So that's really cool. Did yeah. you guys just blindly mail books to people in Shelby County? So we mailed out <laughs> uh, an entire semi truck load of books. We mailed out Whoa. ten thousand copies of my book, um, along with you know a letter just telling people, "Hey, I'm an economist. If we're ever going to get Washington under control, we need to send a different kind of person to Washington." And I think we need to send a person that understands finance. Wouldn't that be a novel idea that someone in Congress understands finance? And so. You guys know my story. You know, as in my 20s, I ran a multi-billion dollar portfolio in in commodities, worked on trading floor for eight years, and I'm an economist. And we got to get this budget under control. And we can all agree with that. No matter what part oh, of yeah. that, $21 trillion is too much. <laughs> Way too much. So you've been uh, you've been campaigning against, we keep calling him the man in Columbus, but... The brother. I'm, we can just say I'm, the brother. I'm, no, I'm just uh, saying I, go out and say it. His name is Greg Pence. Uh, uh, oh. The Marine. Uh, the Marine. Marine. I so we do know that about bought, him. He bought Todd Young's campaign plan yeah. and said, hey, let's yeah. do that. I'm a Marine. I'm a Marine. I'd like to know what he's done for the last 30 years. We know. We found out in the New York Times article <laughs> what he did for the last 30 years. I'm not going to negatively campaign on your show because your listeners don't want to hear me sling mud. But they can go to the New York Times and learn why he hasn't talked about the last 30 years. I wouldn't right? mind hearing it. <laughs> well, you guys can tell him. We so, pull so up the, that uh, the article I read it. It said uh, his he he had the family business, mm-hmm. uh, an oil company, <clears throat> and uh, they operated some convenience stores under the name of Tobacco Road, which seems horrifying in this day and age. I'll say, yeah, yeah it really does. Aaron Dickin would have you thrown out of town. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to ban smoking in public in Henry County, and I, I, I told Dakota Davis, I said, we are going to, if they, if, if Aaron actually does this, we are going to chain smoke outside of the city hall there you go. on the yep. sidewalk we for two hours. Take... I'm not even a smoker. I'm going to take it up <laughs> we, in a I was freedom take protest. take big old stogies out there, you know, <laughs> full on Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> and go out there and, and smoke in front of the, smoking the city for freedom. Yeah. So the uh, <laughs> so the, so the Pence family, they uh, they operated some gas stations in, in Columbus and southeast in Indiana, about two hundred, uh, and they the uh, they uh, for whatever reason, uh, Greg was a businessman as well, so he was appointed to a bank board, and that bank had financed him. Uh, I think he signed some personal notes when they were having a downturn. The um, the family business struggled, defaulted on debts. The, it went to the bank, and then he bankrupt. You know, he was bankrupt and. Said sorry, so he, he used bankruptcy to to move, for, to move forward. <laughs> that was like, you know, one hundred two million dollars. That was a good way to put it, Jerry. He said, yeah, you know, he said sorry. It happens. I, it, you know, it's it, it, ask, it really ask does. The you know, it people, does happen. You know, it's you uh, know, I'm yeah, an entrepreneur. I've started seven companies, and you know, that's not the issue. I think, you know, you read the article. The issue is the, some of the finer points in that uh, how it was dealt with, and um, some of the environmental concerns there. Yeah, so the uh, that's that's the business record. So you right. really haven't seen him run as a business as a businessman. He's mm-hmm. been saying, "Hey, mm-hmm. I was an officer in the military. Mm-hmm. I've had a career, and you know, I'm I've got tremendous name ID." Yep, and you um, keep uh, you keep challenging him to debates, You're calling yeah. him out. You keep and you calling guys him have tried to get him on the media. show. What we've, did he say? Uh, uh, right now, they're the the official. I, I've talked to Nicole. His uh, I think it's his daughter and his mm-hmm. his communications yep. person. And as of right now, they are meeting with business owners, and they're not doing any media. So yeah, th- I, you I haven't know. seen just, you haven't seen him do media. Which I is, talked to a reporter today that was trying to get a hold of him. I was like, I don't know how to get a hold of him. I mean, it's your job. You're a reporter, but uh, it's it's radio silence. It's been radio silence since day one. You know, not only yep. is he not debated, but he's not made any statements to the media live or in writing. I mean, if you look at some of the uh, the the stories, they've been. Um, actually done by his campaign manager and not himself um any quotes or comments so and 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 look and here's the problem that we face here's the simple problem what it boils down to for our district we talked about it earlier we need a representative for our district and how can we have someone that represents our district if they can't talk yeah you don't know actually know what they stand for because they haven't said anything well um, I mean, I, and so, and that's that's the problem. So, how are they going to go to fight for us in Washington? How are they going to go to bat for? Hey, you know, say what you want about the administration. 
you know, the president has recognized, and it, it is about time that I think that as a nation that we finally recognize we got a real problem with drugs. We have an epidemic on our hands. You know, we have a declared a state of emergency. There is funds waiting for our communities. We need funds for drug education, for drug rehab, and we need a congressman that's going to go fight for us for those. And that's what I'm saying is, hey, I'm going to be a voice for our district. I'm going to go fight for us. And you know what? I, I think the problem that we'd have with a, you know, with a vice president's brother in that seat is he's going to have a lot of enemies that are going to be fighting against him for those very things we need for our district. And one of those things, the other things that we need for our district is infrastructure. And it's not just roads and bridges, but it's it's Internet. We talked about that earlier. You know, broadband, as we travel across this district, I mean, we are in every Bergen town and village in this district. And, you know, I meet with business owners and, you know, they're trying to recruit people. They got two problems recruiting people is they got to find people that are so work and pass a drug test and are willing to come to work every day and work. Yep. And then uh, they got to have people that that want to live and raise their families in those areas. And. Hey, when you're trying to recruit, you know, a top-notch recruit from, you know, even pull them away from a Donut County or Indianapolis, and they and they go to a, a rural city, and they can't even stream Netflix. Yeah, I was going to say if they can't stream Netflix or, right. or or watch a Facebook Live that's or right. host a podcast from a spare that's bedroom, right. damn it, we're not coming. Yeah, that's right. Yep. It's, it's the, these are the real problems that we face, and these are the real problems why we need someone that's going to live in our district, understand the problems, by sitting and, and talking about them and debating them. So let's talk about infrastructure. We'll, we, we'll, we'll talk about that topic. The, uh, the federal, state, and local government, Dakota says, uh, in, our, in our show notes, spent $400, $400 billion in infrastructure in 2014. Yeah. Uh, in 2014. Uh, okay. But, you know, there are still major issues. Obviously, Flint, Michigan has been, been something that's been in the news because they haven't had safe lead for years. drinking water in, yeah. in two or three years. We've talked about rural broadband. Uh, wastewater treatment plants. You know, mm-hmm. almost every community's got the EPA said you have to separate your your sewage from your stormwater. Uh, my well, my, my own neighborhood is pretty good about getting around EPA fines. That's right. So that should be good, right? So, but you've got you've got some tremendous <laughs> uh, some some real infrastructure costs that are coming. Absolutely. Not to even begin to discuss the actual the roads and bridges that we mm-hmm. have. Uh, you know, half of your road budget can be spent on bridges alone, and you don't realize that. You know, that doesn't that doesn't buy any pavement, or you know, yep. but you know, we've got bridges that are absolutely, you know, there's rebar showing in bridge columns as you drive across I seventy or up, up and down State Road three all over this, you know, all over the state. What long term is the solution for infrastructure? You have to invest in it. So you know that's why we need to send a businessman to Congress. You keep sending the same type of people to Congress, get the same type of results, and so. There are things that are dollar and cents. We have to balance our budget. There is no question about that. We have to live within our means. There's no question about that. But you also, as a business person, you make those decisions that what is going to be our ROI, our return on our investment. And so when you start talking about infrastructure, there is a return on that investment. So you may be making an upfront expense, but we're having a return on that down the road. And so there's no question that these are things that we need to be investing in and looking at as our long-term assets. And so when you start talking about uh, the budget, you know, unfortunately, we're financing our, our current accounts. And so that means, you know, we're we're paying for our military with debt. And that's wrong, you know, that we're paying payroll with debt. You know, you're yeah. supposed to be using debt what you and I use debt for, you know, mortgages and, and these long-term expenses. You know, we invest in an asset. You're buying everything in, on a credit uh, card. Infra- right. right. Well, so, I mean, infrastructure that's a, that's a is an asset. Yeah, but you we've been in, in the Middle East return. for 17 years. That's pretty. That's pretty <clears> long-term investment. Where's your return on that investment? Oh, I hear you. But about we said it was four hundred sixteen billion dollars that okay. we that uh, state, uh, federal, and local governments have invested in uh, in local or in infrastructure. But about a quarter of that actually comes from the federal government. So three okay. quarters of it is your state and local. So I guess uh, one of my questions to you is: Is that enough? Is it too much? What do, you, what do you think about about the kind of how much they put into it? I don't have the numbers at my fingertips. Um, you know, again, this is why you need a good representative for you in Congress that's fighting for your district <clears throat> because there's an allocation on what comes back. You know, every dollar we send from our from our state and from our district, what comes back to us, and ours is fairly low here <clears throat> in our district. I think that uh, it's. I want to say 74 or so cents on the dollar. We get returned back from what we send to Washington. Um, we need to see that higher because there's things that as we get beat around and drive 30,000 miles across the district, Dave and I have the sore backs to, to prove that our roads are, 
are not uh, silky smooth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> and true. And I'm not just talking about, you know, it's not the federal government's job to, to take care of 500 North. I'm right. talking about, you know, when we go down I-69, the stretch between, you know, my home county and Delaware County to when I drive down to Hancock County, I mean, it's a like downtown Baghdad. And then you same thing you get on 74 and 65. They're all terrible. I-69, by the way, is getting redone. Uh, the state just awarded about an $80 million contract on that. So from your— There's a from, stretch from, that's going to become three lanes, which yeah, is awesome. It, it, and it's going to be, I think, from uh, from Daleville all the way down to uh, where, the, where the, the last one right stopped. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. going uh, to be redone. Yes, yeah. Yeah, sir. So that's but coming, finally. Enough. But, uh, yeah. There's and no I, date on that if you notice that in the what's article. That? There was no date on that. End of next year. As an industry insider, end of next year it'll be done. Oh, there you go. You heard it here, industry folks. That's you it. heard it here first on Fox Jeremiah Liberty. is establishment. I am. Oh, I'm, I'm a total establishment libertarian. I'm the I'm the one. That's a that's an oxymoron in and of itself. <laughs> establishment libertarian. We don't have an establishment. What are you talking about? So you touched on uh, or Dakota did, I guess, a little bit on on our foreign wars, and uh-huh. I. I Posted an open letter last week yeah. when uh, when the president went to bombing. That's right. Uh, he didn't have congressional approval, so I mm-hmm. took exception to it. Uh, the approval or the authority he used is what we had for 9-11, which was mm-hmm. somewhat narrow, uh, saying that we could go after the people that bombed us on 9-11. Syria wasn't included in that, in my view. Uh, so I had an open letter, and I said, I want every person that's running for Congress to tell me, one, do you support this bombing and what we're doing now? to what is the role of Congress and what do you see, think the role should be? Because I, my challenge, my view was that uh, we have had – the Congress has been asleep at the wheel. You know, They haven't been involved in negotiating and authorizing uh, and declaring wars. You know, we, we get in these conflicts, and I've, you know, I graduated high school in 2001. So my entire adult life, we've been, we've been in this, this game. Yep. Chase's adult life, Dakota's yep. adult life, and damn near yours, yep. we've been doing this. Uh, what – what do you see if you if you have our seat in Congress sure. when when you're you know I don't know what committees you're you're hoping to be on but if you're on an intelligence committee or even if you're just asked you know to vote on this what is are you a hawk are you a dove what's your what's your direction and help sure. us understand you so how many did you have respond back to your open letter uh, about eight we did very okay. well yeah I we, saw uh, we had some of the Democrat. Uh... Folks even responded back. That's yeah. great. Uh, Lamb, yeah. uh, obviously. That's That'd be you. Uh, Lake uh, from Muncie. What about that guy from Columbus? I did not hear. Okay. Never heard then. back from him. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Funny. Yeah. And he wants to represent the people? Well, he doesn't want to do media. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, I, you know, it's an, it's an important topic. We haven't declared war since World War II. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. So, um, not since the Germans so, bombed uh, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> He's on a roll here, folks. 1941, <laughs> I, I believe, was the actual year. Um, no, but it, it, it's serious. We have to to play within our roles. I think the president was well within what he is granted under his executive power to do what he did. You know, we should never allow you know a foreign atrocity to do what they did. Um, I would support him, but at the end of the day, you know, I am. I'm not a a military expert, um, and I would hope that the president he he's not either. And we have you know generals and our leaders within the military that are that are given the advice. And you know our job in Congress is to listen to all the feedbacks for him. And so I'd hope the executive branch would uh, notify Congress, and we would get Congress involved in the votes, and and we would be fully educated on those those what is going on. So yeah. one of, going down that path and. What I view as the hypocrisy of, of exactly. people when when your president is in power versus when your president isn't in power. Mm-hmm. Um, there were very similar letters saying, mm-hmm. hey, from, written as congressmen, saying yep. we're ready to help you debate and discuss and authorize action in Syria. Uh, in 2018, 88 members of Congress from both Republican and Democrat sides signed that letter to President Trump. 140, roughly, signed the same letter when it was President Obama in 2015. Mm-hmm. But I think only 14 of those were the same people. Right. Yeah. One, would, would you have signed that letter? And two, would you have signed that letter under either president? It depends on the circumstance. You know, I think it depends on, you know, what the, you know, I was completely behind what we did in Syria. I think that the, the force was, was well justified and uh, I think they were well within their means to do what they did. Okay. So I know that you didn't have a lot of time to to check out the show notes, uh, <laughs> but on there is is a Senate bill. Um, 
been talking about this, and this was introduced by Senators uh, Bob Corker, who is representative mm-hmm. from Tennessee, and Tim Kaine, uh, former vice presidential candidate. Um, and for, he's from Democrat I wonder if from he had Virginia. a brother that would run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically this— Some low blows tonight. Yeah. He, well, and we already talked about we didn't want to sling too much mud. I'm not, not slinging mud. Not, are we? We, just, we talk I, about facts. I just want to know if he's got quiet. family. I enjoy it. I'm, I'm the sports guy. Oh, well, listen, uh, we haven't uh, talked yeah, any yeah. sports. I'm just waiting for, okay. What's going on in the draft? All right, the draft ten starts minutes. at 8. At, um, 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes, okay. The Browns are projected to pick a quarterback with the first first draft pick. Are they going to draft Tim Tebow? Is yes. that what I heard? Yes, Tim Tebow, gift from God, best quarterback of all time. I really think the hmm. Colts should have picked him up the other year. That would have been a good pickup. It would have. He's basically playing baseball, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't heard how he's doing thinking? this season. Uh he hit a home run. His first his really? first that first that bat, he hit a home like a, a home run. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, in the triple A whatever it is. I think it's like double A. In other news, we just got rated five stars on the uh on the Facebook by uh by Ed Tarantino. So we got that going All for right. us. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Nice. All right. Old Ed so, Tarantino. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to this bill. Because okay. I, I I need to keep this fresh in my brain. But it was also sponsored by our senator, Mr. Todd Young. Okay. Um, at, but basically what this would do, w- it would take place of the authorization of military force that we have now, that we have currently um, for the president's uh, war powers. What this does is it it creates a much broader uh, stroke of the brush okay. for the president. There is no time limit. The authorization of military for- force currently gives 60 days for troops on the ground. Um, this has zero time limit like that, and this also names a bunch of different terrorist organizations and countries that the president can drop it down in, but it very sneakily, at sneakily. the very end of it, sneakily, yes, it uh, it says... And, well, they wrote it down and, and can't be that yeah. sneaky, Dakota. <laughs> well, sneakily, it, not it's, sneaky. It's can sneakily, you spell dude. That? <laughs> yeah, <it's> sneakily. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, and anyway, but it's, to, it's to in there. S- s- speak it or uh, spell it. it means sound it out slower. Yes, <laughs> speak, and then Illy. <laughs> I want to put that on a shirt. Sneak, now. not speak. Great. I'm glad you pointed that out. It's going to be a great shirt for did, us. Did I give you guys shirts last time I was here? No, but my parents got one for me at the. Uh, I got one in my closet oh, uh, okay. from the uh, St. Patrick's Day parade. Oh, they, you, they yeah. th- you threw one to my dad. Well, it's Dakota doesn't have one. The guy that looks like John Gregg. That's who it was. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I think I got I got some. I think I'm down to larges and trip, triple XLs. I believe yeah. is all I got. Hey, I got one at home that works. Hey, buddy, okay. I'm, I'm I'll take a large. All right, I'll hook you, book and a shirt. All right, there you go. I'm, shirt. I'm down. Look at all the <laughs> swag we get. <laughs> this right, is what it's so, like to be a media member. So they they <laughs> Dude, put it so in famous. there. Yeah, <laughs> they put it in there that that the president can also uh, use the force against any other defined terrorist group. So basically, this gives. So full, you have to be defined. Yeah. So, I mean, any anybody that the president, the current person in power, defines as a terrorist group, can they can be he can be authorized to use military force against them in this okay. current Senate bill? Is that something that you would that you would? Uh, I I have I have not seen the bill, so I I can't even begin to comment on it without knowing it. But you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, we do need to protect our citizens. That's the most important thing. Um, so I'll have to look at that bill. When you have me back next time, can we talk about it? Yeah. yeah after the that. election, after after, the election. Uh, after this primary victory that we have coming up on May eighth. Yep. We'll have so to. Ha- we'll host it, a debate it, between you and Tom too. There you go. Is <laughs> it? Uh, has it seen the floor? Or is it going to get? It hasn't seen the floor yet. No. Okay. It's a, it's going through committee. Okay. At least it's bipartisan. You know, I, I, yeah. honestly, I don't mind if we. I, I'm not sure that I support this bill either. But at least have a debate. We haven't voted. We haven't. We haven't. Congress has been derelict in their duty. To even put something on the floor, and and so many times that's what happens about a host of topics, and that's the issue is that we need to be able to get stuff done, and you know we continue to see it. We send people farther and farther right to the uh, Congress, and then people farther and farther to the left, and it's just nothing is getting done. You know we have to be able to get some stuff done in Congress, and that's my frustration. That's why me at age thirty six, I'm willing to put almost a million dollars of my own money in this race, is because it's so important to us, and it's so important that we have. Debates have a voice in Congress, and and here we are. We get right back to that topic of debate, and our my opponent refuses to debate. So, funny how that works. When, when you were here last time, we said, "Hey, who do you look up to in Congress?" Have mm-hmm. you it, it, you've had six months since that that time looking and studying and watching Congress? 
Do you, at this point, do you have anybody that you say, yeah, that's, the, that's my guy? People ask me all the time, you know, who, who, who are you like? Who do you want to, I want to be Jonathan Lamb. You know, I, I want to be Jonathan Lamb, congressman from the Indiana 6th Congressional District. You know, there's, there's certainly people that I like. I like that Rand Paul style. Um, there's, there's things that I like about everyone, but at the end of the day, I, you know, I don't want to mirror myself after any one person's policies or what they've achievements are. I'm my own guy. I mean, that's what I am. Good answer. Is there a caucus you think you'd fit in? Yeah, I get that the question. Tuesday all, group, the, you know. Yeah, the, I get that question all the time. I'm, I'm not even on that path of thinking about the caucuses. The tattooed caucus? You yeah, know, I mean, tattooed. they probably wouldn't let me into that. <laughs> do you, um, no, do you have like a full, free. full body that you hide? No, no. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm ink free. You know, you're the first congressional candidate he's asked that to. He did not ask that question to Lane Seekman. I didn't. I oh, didn't. Really? Yeah. Actually, that is profiling. When you win, <laughs> I'm a tattooed well, uh, man. When you get a victory tattoo, that's a. You know what? Your I've vote never totals. thought about that. The sixth Lamb? district. The yes. Lamb. And you just write down <laughs> <laughs> what the number was. <laughs> Maybe I can get Dave to get one. You are on the payroll, Dave. It's uh, yeah. you have to do what he says. <laughs> that includes body modifications. Your boss. <laughs> I was on a, I was on a three on three basketball league when I was in Florida, and we we had a pact. The team had a pact that if we won the championship, we'd all get a trophy tattoo on us. Somewhere, oh. but we didn't win. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you threw it on purpose. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. I was excited. No, one of them wasn't, so he probably he probably threw it on purpose. Yeah, but. I bet that was it. Yeah. So the other uh, the I other like big thing idea. you've talked about uh, has been the economy. And uh, your background it's all about in the economy. It's the economy, stupid. That's right. It's the economy, stupid. That Dakota, before you were born, this guy named Bill Clinton was elected president. And then when he was reelected, the year you were born, that yeah, was who, that was their thing. The, it's the economy, he, stupid. Hey, he's got a wife that uh, ran for president. Huh? I yeah. didn't know that. that so her? apparently, apparently, it's a I thing. It was to, a man. <laughs> it's apparently it's a thing to keep to keep these. Legacies. Legacies in the family. I yeah. mean, uh, it's almost like it? now. Be careful. Your kids might want to run for Congress someday. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, let's not well, say anything that's going to come back against them. them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh man! So well, you have a a book out. Actually, yeah. a, a local business owner. He owns a business up in up in Delaware County, up in Muncie. Okay. Um, his name's Paul or Earl Rick. I think I, okay. I can never pronounce his name right. Anyway. He's a friend of my parents. Paul, okay. And hey, Paul. Uh, he's like, hey, I'm glad you're having Jonathan on because I read his book and he is spot on. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. There you so, go. Yeah, we sent out 10,000 of those. So if uh, the people that are get easily offended in this audience, not, we no. can say the title. Is it is it a children's book? Because Todd Rakita sent out a you children's know, book. I saw that. <laughs> I, I saw don't know. That I, apparently, that's the thing to do when you're running for Congress is yeah. you send books out now. Yeah. But yours is more adult. It is adult. It's called Economics is Like Sex. It's the taboo topics of uh, money and budgets. So, yeah. Are there yeah, any pictures? Been... You know what? <laughs> there are charts and there graphs, There are a few Chase. charts and graphs. <laughs> okay, well, right. You'll have to leave it to your imagination. I'll, I'll, give it a, I'll give it a read then. But we've had several uh, angry customers, I should say, uh, people that, that got a copy of the book that, that weren't amused by the title or the cover. And the cover you know, I, is brilliant. I and as, as I you had a baby say, boomer on the cover. Yeah, so I we mean, had Marilyn, Marilyn, Man- Man- Marilyn not Marilyn Manson, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Monroe, yeah, um, you know, sporting a, a Ben Franklin head. Yeah, you know, that was the awesome. iconic picture of the dress. Yeah, I loved that. But you know, it, it is taboo. We don't ever talk about this. It's not sexy to talk about twenty trillion dollars, twenty one trillion dollars of debt, and you know we've crossed over already. Um, you know, this is what's killing the next generation, and and if. If we don't get people in Congress that truly understands how big of a number that is, so we're not going to get anything done. <clears throat> the Tea Party had mild success mm-hmm. with getting sequestration, mm-hmm. which led to a small reduction in spending both on the uh, domestic side and in the military side. In the latest omnibus, that was all reversed. It's a disaster. So you're not I'm supportive. Steal that word, you, the you, disaster. Yeah, you're not supportive of the president's the president's it. budget or what no. what what Congress came Absolutely through. Absolutely not. No. Yep. We I just pulled up the national debt clock, the real time. I like watching. Yeah. That. I keep it. USdebtclock.org, and it right now we're at debt per citizen is sixty four thousand five hundred eighty one dollars. Debt for taxpayers now one hundred and sixty. Yeah, one seventy four. It's one seventy four. So when I yeah. started this campaign. Um, 
back in August, I remember giving a, a speech, and it was at 160. Mike Boyle wow. says he received a copy of the book, and he said he expected more sex in it. <laughs> <laughs> He's very disappointed. Sorry, viewer. sorry about your luck. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. So uh, your big no on the uh, on the yeah, on the yeah. on the president's uh, the president's budget plan. Yeah. So know this that, that when you when you go in that ballot box to elect me, that I will be a fiscal conservative. You uh, actually mean it. Though, I mean it because a lot of Republicans say they're fiscal conservatives, and then they come out for tax increases, or they say. I'm a fiscal conservative, but we have to spend on this or we have to, you know, th- th- this, no, this budget, no, we this clock doesn't there's, change. There's things that we need to spend on. You know, we talked about infrastructure, but you have to stay within your means when you do that. I mean, you can't just continue to spend. And I say this all the time. Once a genie's out of a bottle, it's really hard to put it back in. And I get it now. You know, as I'm out here running, uh, poli- politicians, you know, it's they, they 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 get elected by, you know, constantly giving out and giving handouts. And it's. It's not easy to a platform to run on taking stuff away from people. Right. Yeah. People that's, don't like that. You're, you're one voice of some, hundreds. There's, but right, and, and so there's you, some you, things that are non-negotiables. You know, we can't be taking away Social Security. You know, we we can't be taking away Medicare. When you pay into those systems, you know, that's a non-negotiable. Now, are I we going to have to look I at reforms? I wish you would cut me a deal today and Absolutely. say, I want to write. I've I've said this for ages, and yep. I wish we could do it both for individual pensions for public employees. And I wish we could do it with Social Security. I would – if somebody said, hey, we will give you a lump sum today, you can get out of Social Security, and it's your money and you can have it, I would take that deal today. I would take that deal at 45 or probably now, close see, to 55. These, and these are the things that we have to have open bipartisan debates on because yeah. the systems as they are are broken and we cannot fund them. And right. so there, so has there has to, to be, be a fix. There has to be a fix. And as an economist, you know, someone that can debate these things, you know, read my book. You know, we talk about this. Um how do we fix this? What are the solutions? And all things have to be on the table, but there's some nego- you know, non-negotiables that we also have. You know, we can't be, um, you know, there could be grandfathered clauses, et cetera, but we have to look to the future. We have to look to the next generation. And, you know, I frankly think that, you know, putting someone in our seat that's 61 years old that um, was a Marine 30 years ago, that's not what. That's not the skill set we need in this district right now. You know, that, and that's not the skill set we need in Congress. I and mean, let's face it. Let's look at our Congress and the folks that are in there right now. Yeah. And, you know, we need to wake up and we need to send a different kind of person to Washington. Yeah. So like that. But do, you, our, do you want to we, – we had a tax cut. Mm-hmm. Do you want to ho- grow our way out of this and hold the line on spending? So, do you want to make yeah, yeah. cuts? What's, specifically, help me out. So – I always talk to this. People don't truly understand it. So at $21 trillion, here's the reality, okay? How do you solve that? How do you get out of it? Well, the status quo is you continue to talk about making a few cuts, and you just borrow more money. That's never going to get you – never going to solve the problem. Well, it seems like what keeps happening is that you talk about cuts, but as soon as they talk about cuts, they spend more than what the cuts were in other areas. So your 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 next thing that you do, and obviously what we favor and I favor as a Republican is you grow your way out of it. That's you know that's the fantastic and that's the ideal world. The the tax cuts I think will help us grow. So when you look at those numbers on how they contributed to um, increase the deficit, I don't think that we did the study with we completely showed what we would have in additional revenue. I think the the numbers that I've run and I've talked with other economists are. That we should be close to net neutral on that, and that's always the hope that you want. You want a stimulus that ends up being net neutral, and that ends up being better for the economy in the long run. So you hope to ultimately grow your way out of it because it only leaves a few other solutions. So the only other solution that you really have that people don't think about is, you know, obviously you can raise taxes and help pay it off. That's a non-negotiable that we shouldn't do. Um, But one that people don't think about is you inflate your way out of it. And that's what we're facing with. Yeah, that's what. So yeah. people don't understand the power of inflation, and you know, I talk about it again in my book. And it's something that is real that that we have to be cognizant of. Is you know, twenty one trillion dollars isn't a big deal if you have hyperinflation, and then twenty one trillion dollars, you know, you just start going to the grocery and paying with a trillion dollar bill. Then twenty one trillion dollars, no big deal. It doesn't deal. mean anything, but right. the purchasing so, power of your dollars that's is right. gone, and, so and your wages are People have to dead. understand inflation, and so that's you know, that's one way that people don't understand is, you know. You can borrow, which never gets your way out of it. You can inflate your way out of it. Or, you know, that final, that A-bomb is you default your way out of it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Those are your options. 
And so, you know, it has to be a combination of, you know, a moderate level of inflation, some serious tax cuts, or not serious tax cuts, some serious spending cuts. Yeah. And then you have to have some serious growth. Right, because what we saw this the last time was was the tax cuts. Mm-hmm. So we're like, oh, good, you know, tax cuts, an increase in spending. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work. No. You, you don't... You don't take a pay math. cut on your salary and then go, well, I can spend more money now. You know, that's well, not well, how things work. You know, the previous time the Republicans had control of the House and the mm-hmm. Senate and the presidency, we got the expansion of, of prescription drugs from right. President Bush. Mm-hmm. And then we had two wars that nothing ever changed. We just kind right. of funded those. Those didn't stop during Obama. And now, the, once again, what the Tea Party had slightly reduced, it was just a fraction that's just thrown. That's gone. And now, well, now we're to back to spending. I mean, there's no faster. question that it has to come from cuts. We have to cut spending, and we have to get real that there's going to be, and it's not going to be easy. And and again, these people they live and die by getting reelected, and that's the beautiful thing that people are appreciating about my campaign. You know, self funding my campaign. I'm not driving around the district begging for money. I'm driving around the district asking for votes and and meeting right. with people. I'm not owned by special interests, and you know, represent. Representative, why they set up this in the Constitution with, you know, senators being six-year terms and representatives being two-year terms. We we're supposed to be the closest to the people. If you didn't like what they were doing, you voted them out. And, hey, I'm not beholden to special interest. If you don't like what I'm going to do, you know, vote me out in two years. But the reality is if we don't have anyone that has the courage to do that, we ain't never going to change anything. And so that's why I think people are – you know, when I talk to Republicans, you know, I get a very mixed signal even from fellow Republicans about where they sit with Donald Trump. But everyone can agree on they love the fact and I love the fact and it inspires me. He's shaking up the status quo. You know, he's not beyond, you know, beholden to anybody. You know, my opponent has raised hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars from special interest groups, lobbyists, PACs. I've taken zero from them. You know, I can vote for what's best for our district. And that's what we need. We need people that are going to vote and represent their district. So you're you're elected to Congress. I and, like that. Okay. okay. You're elected to Congress. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there and it's it's time to pass a budget. What and and you're t- you've been talking about cuts. What areas do you see that need those cuts the most? Oh, you have to start with across the board cuts. I mean, you just have to start everywhere. With it, you know, I think uh, so Rand you're going to be you're going to be told that you're regressive and you're killing grandma immediately. Yeah. Day one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. They're going to recycle. They're going to recycle the Paul Ryan. Grandma's going off the cliff yeah. commercials. But you have yeah. to. I mean, we have to get real that, you know, we all do this. You know, I've done this in, in budgets. You know, I owned a construction company during the recession. Great, beautiful timing. I bought my first company in November of 2007. I think we talked about this last time I was on the air. <laughs> But, I mean, you have to realize that there's places and times that you just have to cut. And one of them now is this is now. It's now you have to cut. And so we have to look at nothing can be off the table. We have to have, you know, new ideas, fresh ideas that, hey, here's where we can save. Here's where we can cut. Um, but there's things that that are, are great programs we need that invest in the future. Yeah, that, and that with your running. monetary background, you believe that you're the best candidate yeah. to do that. Yeah, and I don't, look, I do not promise to have all the answers, but what I promise is to have a common sense voice for, hey, this is the economics behind why we need to do what we need to do. So another area where you've dif- differed in recent weeks from from the White House and the mm-hmm. administration has been steel and aluminum tariffs that were Absolutely. announced. Yeah, I Absolutely. saw uh, I saw you getting some hate on your social oh, media yeah. page. And for we that leave one. it up there. We leave it up there when uh, when it comes in. You know, we take the good with the bad, and you know, it's just it's a topic that's not understood. It's that we don't talk about. It. It's that taboo topic like sex that we talked about. You know, you're not taught this in school, and people don't frankly understand it. But you know, blanket tariff. You know, it kills more jobs than it helps, and especially our district. When you talk about a representative from our district that needs to fight for our district, devastating to our district, devastating to manufacturing, des- des- devastating to the agriculture community. Um, you know, I've heard that, oh, you know, this is great. It's it's short-term pain, and then we're going to have, you know, yeah. get the negotiating that we need out of it. Well, that's great, but short-term pain – can hurt a lot of businesses in our district and put them out. And, yeah, you know, so we're, we are an old automobile town. Uh, yeah. We had a Chrysler plant here in Newcastle. Right. Um, we still have a steel founder here. Yep. We have um, Crown Forklift now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I did see today about uh, 50% of the material cost that goes into an automobile comes from steel. That's right. So if, you know... Um, do, 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 do. Oh, we got the draft uh, going on. Uh, the, the Cleveland Browns are on the clock. 
They're on the clock. They have uh, eight minutes left to, for the first pick of the 2018 NFL, NFL draft. I don't know how any of these things work. They're going, they're going quarterback. <laughs> so just, just, I just wanted to warn you guys. I might interrupt. All right, let us know. Uh, okay. That's okay. We got to know when Chubb goes off the board. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Is that who you want the Colts to pick? I'm hoping. Fingers Number crossed. Six. Yeah. But I hope it's not Quentin Nelson. A guard. Yeah. All right. Back to Congress. All right. So, <laughs> so fifty percent, fifty percent of the material costs mm-hmm. uh, for producing an automobile, closer to a hundred percent of the material costs. Whenever you're talking about producing the uh, the pipelines and things that carry our our oil and our fuel yep. uh, from places to places, and uh, along with that, the people who consume steel as a product accounts for five point eight percent of our nation's GDP. Yep. So that's a. I mean, we're talking pretty big numbers here. And then we have aluminum that gets thrown in with that. Mm-hmm. And aluminum, I mean, in my job, I use it daily. I use it all the time. I, w- I weld it, do all kinds of stuff with it. So it's, I mean, so it's how not we, like it's a small issue. Yeah. And so what did we, let's get back to that budget discussion. How can we get $21 trillion under wraps? What was one of those, those things that we said? Inflation. What are we looking at here, guys? Yeah. What is this going to do? Costs are going up. So um, it's here. You know, we don't want to go through, you know, uh, huge periods of inflation again. I mean, it's just economically it it didn't work, and it's not going to work, and it won't. Um, These are real people in our district that are are affected by this. You know, Ball State put out a study from the Department of Economics, and I believe that for every one job uh, in the steel, you know, we're going to lose 60 you know, here 60 our, downstream manufacturing right, yeah. jobs. So, you know, I was meeting with, um, you said earlier that when I was in Lynn, Indiana, at Astral Caskets, well, they make steel, they stamp steel for caskets. You know, they were looking at, you know, their cost per unit going up and what it was going to do to their bottom line. And, and here's the reality. They can compete well at the lower end of the, the casket change, I guess you should say, you know, which is interesting because Chinese caskets have come in and competed with them. And so, it's it's heavy, and there are big units to ship from China, and so shipping is one of the largest costs of a casket. So Astral doesn't compete well at the high end. What they compete well at is the low end. Well, the cost of their inputs just went up at the low end, and so now, you know, now they're insanely uncompetitive with the Chinese market, and now the Chinese can use cheap Chinese steel and just import it at a higher price than then uh, our folks in Lynn, Indiana, can buy the steel and manufacture it. And so essentially what we thought was going to protect us from Chinese business has just created huge Chinese business. Yeah. Or guess what? Now you can have someone in Mexico that can go buy Chinese steel in Mexico, make that casket in Mexico, and ship it across the border. And all of our jobs in Lynn, Indiana are gone. So these are the real problems that we face. You know, another great example in the ag community is – you know, we have row crop farmers and then, you know, we have um, livestock farmers here in our 6th Congressional District. And livestock, we see it instantly, you know, reflected in the price, you know, especially pork. Pork has just gotten hammered. You know, I, I met with a, a really large commercial operation and, you know, they were just talking about how much they're going to lose per head. And it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, as soon as we started talking about that, you know, these are real things and, you know, they can't, people just can't shoulder these losses. And so this is why we need, again, I could keep harping on it. This is why we need a representative that's going to go represent our district. And, you know, we're seeing in the Senate race here and and for the U.S. Senate seat, it's, it's everyone seeing who can be the biggest Trump supporter. Look, I, I support my president and I support any policy that makes sense for our district. And blanket tariffs does not make sense for our district. Well, and so, it, it has led to a big counterpunch directly at agriculture, particularly right. in soybeans. That's absolutely right. And it's affecting China. And instead of buying their beans from the United States, they're probably right. going to buy from Brazil. That's right. And that's going to not only cause problems for the soybean industry, but then that's going to also directly affect your pork people because absolutely. Th- those proteins go right back into produ- uh, agriculture production, once again, downstream, just like with steel. The guy that consumes those soybeans is the the person that makes animal feed, which feeds it to a hog. That's right. The, the steel goes into a casket. So, so these are the topics when you talk about in debate, and they're not sexy topics to talk about in debate because right. just people just glaze, glaze their eyes over and say, "All right, someone else will worry about that." Yeah, you start talking about numbers and people blank yeah. out. Cause you know, people want to talk about guns and God and you know babies, guns, God and, and glory, and, and you know all sure. these things. And yeah, those are important issues, but. You know, and within the Republican Party, these are non-negotiables for being a Republican. You know, we should all be pro-life. You know, we're all second 
you know, amendment supporters. You know, we get it. These are topics that, that give you a seat at the table being Republican. Yeah, you don't These wanna, are the issues that we need to debate right. amongst you don't our party. Be These sitting come out up, in the primary. If you did debate, you don't want to be sitting up there with a person and just agreeing on everything. That's because right. that doesn't set you apart. And that that's what I found interesting about your answer to this, because there is a poll that was published on uh, on March 8th that said 67% of Republicans um, or Americans who identify as Republicans mm -hmm. were uh, were pro-Trump tariffs. Uh, by contrast, only 7% of people who identify as Democrats were pro-Trump tariffs. That's a huge divide there, man. And I think that on the last show, the uh, episode 24, I asked you if you thought that uh, the Trump and Pence administration would help or hurt your chances. You thought that uh, it would help your chances. And I think that that... I, th I think that that answer is going to stay the same. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen it. It's interesting to watch this Senate race play out here in the state of Indiana. Oh, yeah. Um, we crazy. haven't seen that, that wedge of divide between the tariffs right now. You know, people are still... You know, if you ran for all... Senate, you may be the most likable, likable guy in the Senate <laughs> race right now. For real. <laughs> but um, um, they've, they kind of put a wedge between themselves on the spending bill, you know, with obviously with Luke DeMesser voting for it and Rakita voting against it. And, you know, Mike Braun is has come out, and, and I think he sounds like he's going to be a fiscal conservative. Um, but the tariffs, we haven't seen him really take a position on it right now. And, you know, it is early in the stage, and, you know, I do hope that the administration is using this as a negotiation tool. I know that no one wants a trade war, but, you know, just like we talked about, an, an act of war, you know, this is this – is, this is war for us. I mean, this is real. This is people's lives right here in the 6th District that you you're, know feed their families. You're playing with live ammunition. Even whenever the president yep. does something like this, I, I can tell you as a guy that uh, we don't need to talk real specifics, but I, I'm in the steel industry. I'm in the construction industry. And in the last four months, we've seen raw input costs go up over 20%. Mm -hmm. And that's been real in who's the market. Who's going to pay for that? Well, ultimately the taxpayers ultimately in my industry. the taxpayer is. Because that's who's, that's who's consuming. Uh, so, yeah. right, what we just did was we talked about, the you know, the taxpayers. And so now, you know, we talked about that project on I-69. So now we're going to get X number of miles for the same dollar that we were going to get Y number of miles. And so at the end of the day, it's taxpayers. That's exactly right. And then, uh, you know, whenever we play, whenever we play, from a government, we try to make an adjustment in one place. You, mm -hmm. have, you know, the invisible hand jumps in. That's right. And we, we try to say, okay, we're going to fix steel, and that affects caskets. We try to mess with oil, and then all of a sudden, a asphalt costs different. Right. You know, it, it, no matter what you're chasing, the market the market always reacts. Right. So this is what people don't understand is, you know, we live in an ever shrinking world, not an ever growing world. You know, we have a new world economy, and we are all intertwined, and we're all in it together. The vice president was here today, and on the west side of Indianapolis, <laughs> announcing <laughs> three thousand jobs on the west side of Indy. <laughs> It, from India. <laughs> With the first pick of the 2018 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Baker Mayfield, quarterback from Oklahoma. Poor guy's going to be Brady yeah, Quinn when he grows up. He's, this is bad. And he was my favorite quarterback <laughs> out of the draft, but I didn't want him to go to the Browns. So. Who's on the clock now? Uh, the New York Giants. Okay. Didn't the Colts trade up? They traded back. They had the third pick, and they traded back to six. Yes, six. Yeah. So. Oh, Look, I'm right. impressed that Jonathan can sit here and talk about all these serious issues and go right into the <laughs> NFL draft. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about this. I... <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm... You're just doing your job, son. Yeah, I was told to do this. Don't, don't, don't hate on me. Oh, so you're just blindly following orders is what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they pay me, so yeah. you gotta, you're getting you're getting he's a yes man to the administration. Yep. <laughs> hey, if you want to debate me, we can debate who is better, the Yankees or the Red Sox. This year? Yes. And who do I hate more? Oh. <laughs> I am not Ouch. a Yankees oh, fan. Okay. I'm a Cubby right. fan. I was, I was going to vote for you, but... <laughs> oh, you're a Yankees it. fan? Oh, man, right here on the air and living <laughs> person. Fool. Please don't tell me that... Please don't tell me that, that, that you have a Tom Brady tattoo somewhere. Oh, no. No, I, I'm, I'm a Chicago Bears fan. Now, I, I think Tom Brady's the GOAT, but <sighs> I, I would never get a Tom Brady tattoo. I, I'm going to give you a bloody sock for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's mean. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know what that means, you can look that one up. No, no, no. We all know it well. Yeah. 
Oh, Except for Dakota. Do, Dakota has huh? no clue. I have no idea. Not a clue. A bloody sock. Yeah, Kirk, I don't know what Kirk year Schilling's bloody sock. was that in the series? It's my... Uh, 04? Yeah, it was 04. I'm going to say... Oh, uh, is that 04? My favorite year yeah. was 03. Yeah, whatever. Walk-off home run. ALC. Boone. Boone. Aaron. Boone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could say it. Yeah, it chases... Or ch- uh, Chase gets paid. That's that's Cade in the chat going, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. Ridiculous. <laughs> All right. So uh, we were asking about inputs and, and the mm-hmm. government playing around and messing around with, you know, regulating industries. Uh, uh, Ford's getting out of automotive mm-hmm. completely or out of cars. They're, they're going to be down to Mustangs right. and some other weird small SUVs crossover. And, and trucks. Yeah. And I I'm convinced that that's because we have set policies. There was a, an interesting article that came out today that says, you know, in the 1960s, uh, we set a 25 percent tariff on, on trucks, mm-hmm. imported trucks. Yep. So that's and it's still in place. Forty years later, fifty years later, so that's what makes American trucks more profitable. Is we have this huge barrier to entry over here, and now Ford says the hell with it. We're going to abandon cars completely. Well, it's supply and demand. The industry doesn't want cars anymore. You know, people want they they like their small SUVs. Hey, we live in Indiana. You know, it's it's not easy to hit a pothole in a little car. You know, my three quarter <laughs> ton truck shakes when I hit a pothole. As the um, previous owner of a Chevy Sonic. I can, <laughs> he gets swallowed I can in some of those, that. <laughs> you know, some of those roads that we have. So it's just it's it's simple. The market should be bringing to the market what people want. And right now, people don't want cars. You know, it could change tomorrow. You know, we're already seeing oil at a three year high, and you know, I'm sick of paying almost three bucks a gallon. At you know, in my thirsty hog, and people are going to get there soon, and cars could come right back tomorrow. And you know, that's the job of the folks in the industry to bring to the market what needs to be brought to the market. That's the difference between. Right. You know, the free market industry versus the government but telling you, you what but, to do. But uh, I say you guys. It's not really you guys, but Congress. <laughs> Congress plays with cafe standards where sure. they, they tell Ford Motor Company that your fleet has to meet X. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that is that a policy that you I thought you guys were with? libertarians here. I, we the are. government telling you what to do? I'm saying, do you That's like that? I'm, 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 I'm giving you this. Is, this is a softball. No, it's man. a free market. Yeah. The government should be telling you So you're going to kill do. cafe standards. Yeah, I don't think I don't see why it's any of the government's business. All right. There we go. I like you that. Make, I make whatever people you want. want a big you thirsty truck, or you know what? I told Dave, you know, I'm I'm excited to get a Tesla and make a two door Tesla. We're campaigning in that in two years because. Uh, Gosh, we, I love Teslas. Need it. They look awesome. Here yeah. they take off so fast. Yeah. Oh, if you've ever driven one, it's incredible. Is it? Yeah. You've driven a Tesla. I have. Yeah, oh, I had a buddy awesome. that had one. It was awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. There's people in Hagerstown that own Teslas. I, I, Surprising. I, I was like, amazed at what I saw. The Amish. <laughs> so one of my current companies I have, so I said, you know, we talked earlier, I'm a serial entrepreneur, I've started seven companies. Uh, my newest company that I'm waiting on a patent to get issued on is I'm actually working on electric agriculture equipment. And so, you know, we're doing a lot of battery research on that. So, yeah. Oh, that's it's the cool. future. The future. Be, yeah. It definitely is. All electric is totally the future. Mm-hmm. So you you uh, you touched on the drug epidemic. Yep. And Let's got, solve this problem tonight. Let's work solve it, out. it tonight here on Ball It's Saga pretty Liberty. easy. It's pretty well, cut and dry. We've talked about... <laughs> Drugs we, are bad. Yeah, I did. Okay. You know, you ask what's the funny thing about the campaign is, um, you know, these newspapers want to print a little synopsis and they give you, you know, a topic. And they gave me 50 words to solve the drug epidemic. And I don't <laughs> think that uh, I can solve that in 50 words or I less. I love that. That's or great. Or less. I mean, you and can have up to I would 50 start words. with end the drug war. There you End go. all wars in the war on drugs. So we put uh, that in there. You know, it, it is it is the most serious topic, I would argue, in America today. It's affecting the most things, and you know, if you don't get to the root of the problem, you're never going to solve it. And that's the problem is we have to look on on both fronts. I think, like an economist, you have to think about the supply and the demand, and we have to hit both of those fronts. So yeah, we have to enforce, but we can't enforce our way out of it. You know, we have to really go to the root of the problem, and that's the demand, and we have to have programs, and that's what I talked about earlier. We need education programs to make sure no one ever wants to stick a needle in their arm to begin with. And, uh, you know, it, it, it affects every group. You know, I have personally lost friends that have from this. You know, I, I've seen, you know, families devastated and torn apart, and as we travel around the district, I mean, it doesn't matter your socioeconomic standard, you know, your race, your religion, your creed, you know, it affects everybody and we have to solve this together. Yeah. So the, the we talked a little bit about this on episode 24 as well, but uh, we're going to bring up medical marijuana again because okay. I think it's a big deal, especially from mm-hmm. the federal side, everything that's been going on with President Trump possibly coming out uh, pro medical cannabis. In Vayner, 
Yeah. John, John, John Boehner is a, a lobbyist for pro, yeah. and then uh, Senator McConnell has said he's he's trying to shepherd through uh, mm-hmm. hemp legalization and decriminalizing yeah. or descheduling so, marijuana. At this point, Jonathan, it just seems like it's it's a the matter of time. Wagon. Yeah, I mean, it just seems <laughs> yeah. like it's it's going to happen. Get it, become when a Yankees fan. To... And, here, here's and, the reality: and get on the pro marijuana bandwagon. Let's go. No, um, the reality is, is there needs to be studies done on it because right now, you know, I know enough about the topic to be dangerous. I haven't. You know, it's it's not my forte. You know, I have never smoked marijuana, never inhaled, never smoked it. So it's just it's not my thing. But the I can let us listen. I'll I'll study. But it. I can tell you, it needs to be it needs I mean, to be studied. I'll put myself out there. As the long only, as I don't go to prison for it. The only my job. the only studies that have been done on it are are by your anti groups and by your pro groups. There needs to be true research done on it, and then we need to we need to debate and talk about it, and then it needs to go to the states. You know, from there. Chase, don't volunteer to study it. Did you watch the beginning of Pineapple Express and what happened to Bill, happened to Bill Hader in the beginning? <laughs> I, I did see yeah. that. Yeah. Executed. Be careful. <laughs> be careful what you're asking for, buddy. That's right. Um, no, but it, it should be something that, that uh, we have to study and, and have to look at. And it shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't just be on the bandwagon, off the bandwagon without anything that we need to be doing in Congress. We should have a true reasoning behind it. And you should... For example, if you want to pass a $1.3 trillion spending bill, maybe you should read that and do a little bit of studying on that. It's the same thing with anything. We have to look into it and dig into the true numbers and, and the true stories and debate it and talk about it and look at it. So there are um, medical, you have medical marijuana, recreational marijuana, and industrial hemp. Those are three kind of in the same you know, three different mm-hmm. flavors. For some of, reason, uh, uh, yeah, the, industrial the, the, hemp is in there. Yeah, but so, we have it in Indiana now that we have it as part of. We can grow industrial hemp in Indiana now. Uh, barely. Uh, yeah. Only, only at Purdue University uh, through there. The, the Indiana Seed Commissioner. There's, there's still an issue. Okay. Um, where it's not fully legalized in Indiana. The, yeah. the average guy, Cade Colger, our co-host, can't grow hemp on his farm. Yeah, um, we just learned about the Indiana Seed Commissioner okay. preparing for one of these shows. Yeah. We were like, so the, it, what it, the heck is that? Yeah, and that's a that's an officer from Indiana's agriculture group at Purdue University. Okay. So um, if the federal government descrim- decriminalizes or deschedules hemp and says, hey, we don't need to be in this anymore, which is what M- McConnell is asking for. Go to the states. Then, then Indiana can decide to do mm-hmm. that, and it's not it's not an issue. It's yeah. compl- the computer is completely go to the ready states. to go. I mean um, – you know, there's a lot of things that our federal government just doesn't have their hand in, and I think that uh, the states can do it better and local folks can do it better. And that's specifically, you know, to get back to, you know, how we work on this opioid crisis is it's not going to be solved by the federal government and it's not going to be solved by the state. It's going to be solved at a local level because every community is different. And so we have to get things out of Washington's authority and to the people. So that applies for medical marijuana, industrial hemp, and, and recreational marijuana, just 10th Amendment and decriminalize at the federal level and let Indiana decide for themselves? I think all states need to ultimately do this, yeah. Okay. So what about Trump's plan to execute drug dealers? I haven't heard that yet. Yeah, that was a big deal going around in libertarian circles. Uh, Trump proposing capital punishment to uh, uh, street drug dealers. But uh, that was a that was a big thing. We should just throw them all on island. Well, one I know. Night. Drug island? One night. I think they did that. It's called Australia. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> there's... And one of the counties here that we represent in the district, uh, they had their first case where they're trying um, someone for, you know, basically an overdose, uh, you know, an overdose, an overdose, overdose death. death. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we have, it's come to our attention as we've been super serving this local issue. Henry County has a jail that is an absolute mess. You're every not alone. every candidate that's come through. You're not alone. Uh, and as we've, we've looked at it, Delaware County, your home county, is turning a middle school into a prison, into a jail. That's the plan. Han- Hancock County has it on their ballot. Mm-hmm. They can vote for you, and they're looking at a $60 million bond to build a jail. 50? 55. Yeah, 50. I'll round it up. 55, 60 million. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll borrow 55, but it'll, they'll need 60, okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rush County's building one now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fountain just... County is building a 10, had, had one that bid last week for $10 million. Every one of these counties in our in our state are filling their jails. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you think with the That's, jail populations that we that should be done from the congressional level, or is that once again a state issue? Because it, it, a lot a of the county people say that state folks have sent them to the county it, it, jails. That's the problem. The, the state and uh, the legislation number, I don't remember what it was, a few years back, that put that problem basically uh, – uh, 
took the problem from, you know, the state locking folks up to putting it on the local counties. And, you know, it's a real problem across. And again, the state save monies and just push that expense off on the counties. And, you know, again, as an economist, these are unintended consequences that you have to realize that someone's got to still pay for this stuff. Just who's going to pay for it. And right now uh, they're they're passing the bucks to the county folks. And, you know, that's something at the state level that they really need to look at in session. And, you know, it is affecting our district. Almost every county has something on the radar. Everyone's overcrowded. And this is a real issue. And that's that's why I'm as I'm running for county council here, mm-hmm. I'm looking at the issue of she going. It needs to be solved, but I really feel like a lot of times, and the federal government does it to the state, and the state does it to the county. They they load the bullet in the gun, and and then make the local yep. official pull the trigger in a lot of these. But at the same time, there there are very legitimate roles where Tenth Amendment says it's not the federal government's That's issue. Right. The state really is the the That's authority right. on these. Yep. And it should be. I love you know. That's what I keep getting back to. You know, we've had several things here. We talk about the Tenth Amendment and what it should be back to the states, and. It absolutely should. And but what we need to do, you know, again, get to the root of the problem. You know, why are we filling up our jails? You know, yeah. we, it's all drug related. And so maybe instead of putting a Band-Aid on it, we get to the, the point where we actually fix it. You know, we get to people. The easiest way to keep someone out of jail is to get them off drugs to ever, ever begin with. Prohibition, man. It's it's uh, to me. This seems so similar. You know, we we have the pace team, the mm-hmm. pro- proactive, some whatever it is. Yeah. Hancock County's part of it. Henry County's part of it. Wayne County's yep. part of it. They patrol I seventy, and you will. We had an arrest of a dude that had an SUV full of marijuana. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, marijuana is illegal. It's in Indiana. It's illegal. And federally, it's illegal. I grant that technically. Uh, and but you so wonder is speeding. why people want SUVs. This is why no one wants small yeah, cars. Yeah, because you can bulk haul your weed. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, we we take a picture of it as the state police and the pace teams will, and it looks like the drug bust of the century, sure, whatever. But it's it's, it's like you're arresting, you're arresting a tourist. They could be going from Oregon to Massachusetts with a perfectly legal product, yep. and we make a big deal out of it here. Uh, and then we put them in our jail. There's, it, that is overcrowded yeah, I mean, already. Yeah, I understand. You know, the, the libertarian view is, you know, to, to make everything... You know, just legal and it will fix it. Does it fix everything? You know, what well, again? We need it. We need to talk about these things. Right. I'm trying. I'm trying to have the conversation because yeah. we did it. Prohibition of alcohol was the same thing in the mm-hmm. 30s. The federal government or the the U.S. government was poisoning alcohol and killing its citizens at that time. Uh, and you know, we have we have pictures of of people destroying kegs. As, as government agents, so maybe that's what we We've do. Seen that, you've seen the Animal House when they take the bar. Does it remind you of that? Took the bar. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I just, I just feel like so much of this is the, it's the same, it's the same issue over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Just want you to think about it. I want to have the conversation. That's the same thing. It's the same thing that we talk about. You know, there's a huge topic on guns right now, and we're finally seeing young people raise up and and have this voice. And you know, it's the same, the same thing. You know, does banning guns make you safer? You know, does, right. does banning same argument, does banning though. liquor make people drink less? Uh, it's it's the same argument though, and we hear it from we hear it from ultra ultra far right people all the time about uh, keeping marijuana illegal and things. It's you know it's still a prohibition, but whenever it comes to guns, well, people will just still they still get guns. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of the same philosophy that we use for both things. And if you look at it from a a middle of the road perspective, and you know you have a you have a really level head on your shoulders, a lot of common sense. I don't know. Did you shoot your Yeti cooler this week? I didn't shoot a cooler. No. <laughs> but you are you can... mad at your cooler or your cooler company? No. Yeah. Why would you shoot a Yeti cooler? It's a two hundred dollar cooler. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. That. I don't have a Yeti. Are, are I got a styrofoam. Familiar, are you familiar with the uh, no, with the controversy? Is there, is there something going viral oh, the, here on the, the NRA? The NRA and Yeti are fighting each other because the oh. NRA had a discount on Yetis, oh. and then they uh, they they've had a big falling out. Mm. You got to get back on the Facebook, man. You got to have your people. <laughs> your staff's got to tell you about these things. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk uh, talk to. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Mr. Talby <laughs> or Josh. Mr. Talby. Yeah. Yeah, got to prep them. Got to know Josh, what the virals are. Uh, do either one of you have a cooler? My dad does. I have an. Ooh, I have an Arctic. Do for the show. We should to- shoot we his should, cooler. We should shoot his cooler and get it on video. Uh, I don't, he'll disown me. I will yeah. never get anything for Christmas again. Well, I have an Arctic cooler, it with a, and it's really an nice. Arctic or what is it? Ozark. Ozark yeah, trail. Ozark yeah. trail ones. There you go. Yeah. yeah, could be done. We'll talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> have, the, have the Giants drafted yet, Chase? 
Yeah, the Giants picked uh, Saquon Barkley, running back out of Penn State, and yep. then the Jets picked um, oh, Sam, Saquon. Sam huh? Darnold. Interesting. Um, quarterback out of USC. So two quarterbacks gone. The Colts are drafting six. If yep. two more go, they can get a they can get the player well, they've been coveting. Cleveland's up right now, and they picked Baker Mayfield. First, right. So I don't know who they're going to go with. Do we have any baseball score updates? Yankees won earlier, fifth straight. Um, Red Sox lost at least three in a row last time I saw. That was yesterday. I don't know if they lost today. My Cubs won last night, I believe. Cubs are doing okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't hate the Cubs. I mean, they were losers for like 100 years, so it's hard to hate <laughs> them. But. So we're talking, uh, we're talking guns a little bit. Okay. All right, um, back, back to the show. Bump stops. Yeah. Where are you at on those? Are you, are any, you know, is that, do you consider banning bump stops a form of gun control? I don't know. You know, I've so far, uh, I think, actually, Donald Trump has come out with some pretty level positions that I, I think are, are pretty good. That and he's saying that we needed a discussion on this. And again, I don't have all the answers, but I know that taking away our guns is not going to make us safer. You know, we need to get back to the root cause of these mass shootings. We need to keep guns out of the hands of violent criminals. Just like the drug epidemic. It's the root cause of everything. It's find the, the find, find what is the causing the issue. And find the pain, chop heal the pain. Yep. And that's you what you have to get to. Yep. Treat the disease. Yep. I think we've worked our way through the show notes to go. Have we oh, solved the we world's problems. Are we there? Is, is that it? We got it all? There. We yep. finished them all? Mm-hmm. Now, if now if Jonathan gets into Congress, then uh, we can be like, hey, man, we solved all the problems in an hour and a half on the boss of the Liberty. I mean, you got two years. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> have you uh, have you figured out which one of the congressional buildings you want to work out of yet? Are you a Rayburn guy or a Longworth guy? You know, know. you know what building you want to be in. You're measuring I'd the drapes. I'd be sleeping in my office. So uh, whatever has the best pullout couches. <laughs> did uh, Did you watch Alpha House on Amazon? Yeah, did yeah. You show I can't that? They canceled that. that. Uh, two episodes or two two seasons, and that was it. I know it was a great show. John Goodman sleeping on a sleeping in a guest. You know. With the well, they all shared a house. Yeah, he he was in there, and it was uh, Kelly Ripa's husband, and then uh, some other dude that got sh- got got shot in Iraq or blown oh, up yeah, or whatever. That's right. That's the, right. It's uh, been a while since I've seen that. I think that he was like a, a closeted gay Republican senator from Nevada. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good show. Utah, wasn't he? Maybe Utah. Yeah, maybe he was a Mormon. It, it, maybe he was a Mormon from. It was. I, don't I think remember. it was Nevada. I don't, I don't know. know. One of those but, southwestern uh, states. I'm hoping that we get someone elected to the Senate seat that that maybe will let me uh, share a room with them. That'd be awesome. That'd be all right. You need a roommate over there. Yeah. So you have. What been do you guys making... think about the Senate race? Are you following that? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, I'm following it pretty hard. There uh, is not a single person running for Senate that I in the primary or at all that I can look at and go. Are you guys going to put up okay. a Libertarian for Senate? Uh, what do you have to yeah. be we'll on find the out May fifth. Uh, we have automatic ballot access. Uh, Lucy oh, Britton okay. ran two years ago, and okay. uh, I don't know if she's running for sure yet or not. Uh, but we'll see. We'll and see. And then we have a guy from Hamilton County that's trying to get on the ballot. He's, He's going to need. I'm going to say twenty-seven thousand signatures or twenty-four thousand. It's like twenty-seven thousand yeah, signatures. He's going to need in about a month, and it's. Probably, I'm going to guess that's going to cost him yeah. three hundred thousand dollars. He might be the best. The I mean, he did work at Burning Man. Yeah. You know, that's his past experience. It's. I uh, think it's just going to be. It's a. It's a monumental task to get signatures. It was a task I to get five hundred. Uh, for Senator Young in in the first congressional district, he got to four ninety seven. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh my gosh. That was it. I mean, wow. th- there were two other pretty serious Republicans that failed to make the ballot. Uh, Andrew uh, and Tommy. Andy, Andy, Andrew Tommy. Andrew from yep. from, uh, from uh, southeastern Indiana. Mm-hmm. It's in your district. And uh, then no, Andy he's Horning. actually not. He's oh, over is he in? Ninth, is, he's in, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very close though. Mm-hmm. It, I guess he was in Jefferson uh, Jeffersonville. Maybe Jeffersonville. Not. Yeah. We have Jefferson County, but not in Jeffersonville. Yeah. It's it's close. It's, you, yeah. I guess Madison is as close That's as right. we get. Then uh, we had Andy Horning on the show, and he Andy unfortunately appeared. didn't reach his, his signature. But he's a libertarian by uh, party definition, isn't he? He has run. He, he's run uh, as a Republican, and he ran in the seventh district uh, as a Republican uh, years ago, and he ran in the eighth district as a Libertarian. Okay, and he's run for U.S. Senate as uh, as a Libertarian. So he's been he's played both both sides. Now is he going to be one of your choices for Senate? Uh, I think I think he's sworn off politics again for a okay. while. Andy, uh, and it, I, yeah, he's. I think he's done for a little while. Okay, it's it takes a toll on you, man. Oh, I know. It's I a, mean, it's a beating. It is. You know, I'm eight months in, and you know, my family is. You know, luckily we're having fun doing this. Uh, at least on the weekends, my wife and and boys get to go with me out on the road, and you know, it's a lot of fun. You know, the fall was a lot of fun with all the parades and football games and uh, and all those things that we got to do, but. 
you know, it certainly is, I'm gone a lot from dinners with the family. I was able yeah. to go to my son's baseball game last night. It was cold. I mean, you can go to, that's in the district. It's not like you're cheating. I know. You're I know. going to a baseball game is totally fine. Yeah. There's you seen uh, campaign in there? Take some of your signs. Well, I did. You know, I <laughs> handed out a couple of business cards. Saw some people I hadn't seen in a while. People I went to high school with, I'd actually seen that, seen in a while. So, yeah. There you go. There was uh, a guy that used to work with me. His uh, his kids went to high school with you. Oh, yeah? Swander. The Swander. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And in, uh, in Yorktown. How about that? Yeah. So, and he highly recommended you. It's a small world. It is. <laughs> well, yeah. Delaware County you. guy. <laughs> oh, now it's going to be stuck in my head. I know. That's one of those songs, man. Once it's in there, it doesn't come out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so we've we've occupied your time for quite a while tonight, and you got to go put up yard signs here in Henry County tonight. Uh, is there anything else? Does that... anyone give us a four by eight tonight? Uh, Do we have a four by eight in people, Henry County? If people want them, hit, hit us up now, and we'll get them. Or head north. You guys have Kate four Coger. by eights Kate everywhere. Coger, we're right asking here. you. Kate Coger has some prime real estate. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of people in this district that uh, that have been hand painting signs. I know and the wind group. Uh, they've had sign painting. And they look parties. nice too. They look pretty yeah, good. Do good. Well, Ed Tarantino. Well, he, we found out he, he was a, a he was a painter. Yeah, that's right. So he's he, he's uh, he's pretty good at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So people follow you. They want to get in touch. They want to they want to get their sign. How do they how do they follow the Lamb campaign? That would be at electlamb dot com. Yep. Any more commercials coming out? We have uh, some things in the pipeline. There's some. They're working on some stuff. Yeah. There you go. All right. You did uh, you did WIBC. You were you did an Abdul appearance the other day. Yeah, and Done a couple uh, of those now. And Ro- uh, my boy Rob Kendall, you you yep. you were on yep. there. He beat you up a little bit. He was picking on you, and I I took your side because you you know you got you spent all this money on the Super Bowl commercial. He said, "Why the hell did you run that?" He thought it was the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. But I ran it because we're people, talking about it. People know that's yeah. right. And the number I mean, one thing is name ID, right? I mean, my God, it did its over. job. That's <laughs> what won you over. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been two months ago and we're still talking about it. I it know. obviously did a great job. That's right, legendary. I don't know why you don't have an NFL draft commercial. Oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, for the reelect. Dang it, for the reelect. For the Come re-elect. on, Dave, you should have been on that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, if you get to the fall, the World Series will be on. Yeah. Right. You're gonna need to buy some some TV time down there, maybe in Dayton and Indianapolis. I don't know. Maybe Louisville. it'll be the 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 Cubs and the Yankees. No, oh, I hope so. Mm. We'll win the the twenty eighth World Series. <laughs> so, have you been watching the uh, watching the other primaries, the, the the Democrat side? You've been crossing paths. You've been meeting with we those actually, guys. We uh, actually we saw some at lunch today. We were down in Shelbyville and we bumped into. You were at the Chicken Inn. Uh, we were there at the Chicken Inn. I MSNBC was place. down there yeah. with some fake news. Some fake news. <laughs> no, I didn't hear anything fake today. No, it, uh, the uh, Jim Pruitt was down there, right? Yep. Yeah, we bumped into Jim and his wife, Mimi. Yep. Yep. The team Pruitt, they're from Del- uh, Decatur County, I think, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We try so, to keep tabs. Yeah, yep. you guys are doing a good job. We try. We try doing our hardest. Better than the, uh, the national media, local media. They're yeah. not following it. And they're all fake a, news, man. This is a big deal. This I mean, the real we, need deal. To, we need to get people engaged and to understand what's going on. And, and that's been my number one surprise. People ask me what my number one surprise in this campaign is. It's just it's the complacency. So the people that. That don't vote are the people that that walk in and vote and they're uneducated. Yeah. And uh, my plea with everyone is get yourself educated and learn the true issues and and don't vote on someone based on their their last name alone. And you look at my opponent, you know, without that last name, he's just a guy. He's just a guy that, just a guy. Well, very good. Chase, you got final thoughts for us tonight, man? You know, I I really don't have much for you. You're not going to ask him the questions you asked me last night. I'm I'm not. And. (laughs) Listen, you're lucky. Um, I do have a couple things. Um, the who was the team that was on the clock last time I spoke to you? You just said you said oh, the Giants. It was the Browns. The Browns were on the clock. With the, the Browns pick. picked uh, cornerback Denzel Ward. Okay. Um, the Broncos. A corner. Select- so Chubb's on the board. The yes, Broncos. Chubb is on the board. The Broncos selection is happening right now as I speak. They're going to take a quarterback. Oh, who is it? Hold on. Hold on, it's it's coming. Peyton Manning, the pick it is, is Eli Manning. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Did they trade <laughs> Eli? What's his face is up? Um, Who's what's his Tim face? Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. No, I don't know. It hasn't said. It says Bron- Broncos selection, and the president's up there speaking. And I it's pending. Should have happened. Oh, the president hold on. is speaking. There's, there's a kid in the wheelchair <laughs> on stage, so it could be a while. So I'm just gonna go ahead on. I'm gonna go on with this. Um, I do have one request. Can what's you request? can you say Lamb? For me, lamb. Thanks, man. I, that's the only reason I came here. <laughs> it's like getting him to play Freebird. Oh, oh, oh! 
Mm-hmm. Did he go off the board? Bradley Chubb. He Broncos went to the, the Brown. Bradley uh, the, Chubb. Man. Uh, sucks for me, too, because you'll probably pick Quentin Nelson. You really want Quentin Nelson for the Bears. Do you guys have I money do. riding on this or something? It seems to be a little... Uh, now there's quarterbacks left. The Colts did. are going to trade. I'm gonna, I think the Colts are going to trade to Buffalo, and they're going to get the I, 12th I and the 22nd. I was, I was hoping they would do that. It's my yeah. prediction. Of course, it's a podcast, and people already know. So they're, they're yeah. listening, going, Jeremiah, you're an idiot. Why in the world did you talk about that on the show? <laughs> Very dated. Right, it's like LeBron uh, hitting that shot last night. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, I started listen, on the phone when that was happening. I just want to say, I was covering the game last night. I didn't get the last part of it because the show was over by that point. But the NBA's rigged. Okay, goaltending, <laughs> they didn't call it rigged. <laughs> you know, if they would have called goaltending, you can say, well, he hit the three-pointer. Yeah, they called but, goaltending, they lose by one anyway. Well, Whatever. who knows? He might have not went for the three-pointer if he was down by two. He would have probably went in and tried to... Try to get a layup or something and cause a foul. We'll but, see. This reminds you know, me, you, you, you're you not old enough to remember the Pacers having to get by the Knicks, and bat, and it was just... Reggie. Took I, knew, I remember Reggie yeah. a little bit. You remember... Later in his... Yeah, with Ron Ron. Yeah, and, yeah, and, I've yeah, seen the, the 30 for 30. Guys. Yeah. So, there you go. All right. All right. That's, that's so all So you got broadband to stream Netflix. That's right. Yeah. We got Metronet here, man. If you've got if you've got the access here, we have a gigabit internet service to this house, to this studio. We have fiber optic to the premises. Some places, it's pretty, it's pretty solid. Henry County's the place to be and be seen. That's it. What uh, what you got for us, Dakota? Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to plug Cade really quick again uh, about the farmers thing. But uh, hopefully, you know, it's that time of the year again. My yard looks horrible because I haven't had a chance to mow it this week. Man, I tell you what, podcasts. I was just I was praying that the weather would stay cold and I wouldn't have to mow until May 9th. But <laughs> I had to break down and mow last Sunday, so. Yeah. Do you think uh, Do you think you're the only guy in your race that mows his own lawn? I would uh, venture to say, well, uh, I know the one that lives outside of the district in the 5th, I think he's got a townhouse. I don't think he's got any grass. And then I think, I assume my, uh, I don't know what my uh, opponent in Columbus does, but I would highly doubt that. Hmm. Interesting. Joe, I mow my own yard. I push mowed the whole thing. Joe oh, Hogsett. I got a zero turn and my boy likes to ride with me. My boys actually fight. Like, who gets to ride? <laughs> Joe Hogsett, the the guy from Rushville, that's the mayor of Indianapolis. When he uh, when he was uh, when he was running for mayor, he yep. had his lawn mowing shoes in the commercial. Oh, yeah, he, he he's like Mister Rogers putting his lawn mowing shoes on. That's awesome. So, think about that for the uh, for the fall. No, I just wear my boots. I had your, my uh, your regular guy clothes. Yeah, my yeah. regular guy clothes. Regular guy clothes. Let's see. I don't I don't think I have anything else prepared for final thoughts except. Support us on Patreon, as always. You Vote know, for you, Lamb on May 8th. <laughs> you need to get on patreon.com slash boss hog liberty. You need to pitch in. We have, we've, uh, things have been developing behind the, behind the scenes here, and we're getting closer and closer to moving to our own studio space in the beautiful downtown Newcastle, Indiana. But we're still like a couple hundred dollars away per month from that, from reaching that goal and, and actually getting there and getting moved in. So if you can jump on there. Give us some money. I sent out all of the uh, posters, um, every, and the lady at the post office said that everybody's going to get their posters by Saturday. There you go. So, nice. They'll have time yeah. to Why frame them over the weekend. Why don't you guys get a van, a mobile studio, and the studio comes to you? Man. I like that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> we could travel, just do it out. on yeah. location. Well, we could just have the guests show up at the van parked in parked on, on the street here. I know. <laughs> I'm liking it. I think you should do the mobile studio. The AC would probably be better We in could there. park it on 14th Street where there's never any traffic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would be downtown Newcastle. All right, yeah. Well, awesome. The uh, the Patreon thing is growing. There's uh, there's definitely plenty of content over there. Um, there are some things in the works. We're we're looking at some space over the weekend uh, to see the Indianapolis Colts pick is in. Oh, he's getting ready to announce it. It's not a trade. We're waiting it's patiently. Not a trade. Oh, did they take Nelson? They picked Nelson. They took a guard. Oh. That's like the Jets taking a I tight hope end. Andrew Luck breaks his neck. Um, oh, come on now. Don't you do that. <laughs> I'm just saying that I really wanted him. That's that's all I wanted to say. Uh, <laughs> it just ruined my night, well, everybody. We, all right. Well, we're going to watch some Super Bowl 41 uh, highlights uh, to, crowd, to to just crush your dreams a little bit I more. Was, and we'll, uh, we'll call it I a night. I was only 10 when that Super Bowl went down. And uh, I, I was a Colts and Bears fan. I know. Going into that Super Bowl, and I picked the Bears, and I'm I'm sticking to it because you know, Bears are better. Because you were ten, I was ten. <laughs> they had cooler colors, and they had Brian Urlacher. The last time they won a Super Bowl, I was two, and Jonathan would have been six. Best defense, 1985, of all right? Time. The shuffle, yeah, I remember yeah. the shuffle. So, all right, all right. 
Well, that's that's it for this show. I guess uh, we're back uh, Thursday of next week with a couple county councilmen, Nate Lamar. That's correct. And uh, Steve Duggar will be on. So uh, together, they'll be on together. together. Oh, nice! Getting everybody yeah. in at the same time. That's the uh, the last in our candidate series, and then uh, following that, we're going to do an election night special on Tuesday night, the night of the election. We're going to send Chase out on a remote, and he's going to call in with. Uh, well, listen. Oh, are you going to break our hearts? <laughs> I'll possibly be on my way to Florida. Oh, no. on that. Night. Oh no, I am not oh, sure. No. Yet. When are just... you voting? Are you voting before you leave? I will vote before I leave. Do have you guys early voted yet? I don't want to go to jail, man. I'm a libertarian. It's a criminal offense if I vote in the primary. It's closed party business. Oh, These laws they have. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm a public figure. They could pull up my voting records, and then God only knows I'll end up overcrowding that Henry County Jail because I voted. Oh, man. It's oppressive. It is. This whole voting system that we have in this country is ridiculous. It's an oppressive mm-hmm. regime. Let's we talk should about move the to next conventions. Show. We'll see. We'll see we what will. happens. Let's talk about the next show after the election. The election special. That's right. Back. The Tuesday, the Tuesday night, we're gonna try. We're gonna have some remote calls. So if we if we can hook up with you, we'll try to have you on the air and see how uh, sure. see if we're celebrating. You got my number. We got it. There we go. We'll hit all you right. up. All right, that's it. We will see you all next week. All right, appreciate. it. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians Network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk, which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to wearelibertarians.com and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at wearelibertarians.com.